Hello team, welcome back. And today we are going to start a new section in which we will learn about the Docker stack services, right? So first we will see what is the Docker stack. So let's start with. So as the word stack is explaining itself, this is something which could be the stack of the services, right? So in Docker Swarm, the stack is a group of interrelated service that share the dependencies and can be orchestrated and scaled together, right? It means if you are running a service, it means if you are running an application and that application is using 9, 5 or 7 services and these services are interrelated, then you can create a single stack of these services, right? Because they are interrelated so that they can communicate to each other over the one network or two networks. They share the dependencies as well, right? And the orchestration of these services is quite easy if we are using the stack. And in some time, if you want to scale up some services, then you can do that as well, right? So the best example we have seen the orchestration or the stack in the last lecture in the last assignment where I have deployed five services, right? One service was running on five replicas. Another service was running on five replicas and DB result and vote was running on the single node, right? So these were so that was also a stack, right? But the situation is we have started all the services as a individual. In the stack, we will declare all the services and dependency in a single file and then we can use that particular file as a blueprint to start these services. A single stack is capable of defining and coordinating the functionality of the entire application. As we have already discussed, if my application have more than one service is required, then a single stack is capable to define the complete definition of that particular service and the coordination functionality between these services. Some complex application may have multiple stacks as well. It is not like that a single application can use a single stack. A single application may use multiple stacks as well. And as I told you, the Docker stack services we need to define and file. And that file share the Docker Compose YAML file format. In the Docker Compose YAML file, we just need to insert it the Swarm specific properties for the services. So in shortly, we are going to discuss about this. Shortly, we will again discuss what is the Docker Compose YAML file, what is the structure of the Docker Compose YAML file. Although we have already discussed all these things in the Docker Compose YAML lectures, but again, I'm going to show some things, right? So that we can relate the things. And the file name of the stack should be the docker-stack.yml. So if you have the Docker stack YAML in your project, then you can start your stack by a single command. So we are going to discuss this. First, we will develop an application from the scratch and then we will start it with the Docker Compose YAML file and then we will start it with the Docker Compose stack YAML file. So we are going to build our own images. The image will be called as sample underscore nginx project. This image is basically uh, a composition of four files. First file is the requirements file. Second file is a Python program. Third file is a Docker file and fourth file is a YAML file. So let's see what is the image and here I have implemented four files. You can say the first file is app.py, right? This is the Python file, which what is doing, which basically connecting the Redis socket and putting some HTML code over here, right? So we don't need to understand this particular code. Then we have the second file docker compose YAML file. The third file is docker file itself and the fourth file is requirement, which is flask and it is required to execute this particular program. So let's first start with the docker file, right? What my docker file is doing. So docker file will basically first download the Python 3.7 slim, right? From the official docker Hub repository. Then I am defined the working directory, which is underscore app, right? Then I have copied the current directory to the app directory. Then I have installed the needed package, right? I have installed the needed package. I've installed the flask and Python. I'm exposing this on port 80, right? And define the environment variable name equals to world, right? And I'm executing the command Python app py. So first let's create an image for this particular project. So we have discussed these particular things earlier as well, how we can create the image from the Docker file. If you don't remember, then there's the command docker build hyphen hyphen tag equals to your image name dot dot means from the current directory, right? So we will go to the terminal. Right. And if you execute PWD, then you can see I'm inside the sample underscore nginx project. If I will put LS, 
then you can see we have four files over here the docker file app.py file docker compose ml file we will discuss it later and the requirement.txt right now what i need to do i need to build this particular image right so for this we can execute docker build hyphen hyphen tag equals to image name suppose i'm going to take it friendly hello colon version 1.0.1 right hit enter button uh oh so you know why we are getting the error because we didn't define the docker file location right so i will again execute the same command and put a dot over here dot means take the docker file or take the necessary resource from the current directory and right now i'm inside my sample nginx project and at the same location i have my docker file right hit enter button so you can see it is downloading something right and it is working right so you can say step 7 is completed and image is successfully generated see you are getting the message as well successfully tagged friendly hello version v1.0.1 right if i will put ls if i will clear out my console and execute a command docker image ls then you can see a friendly hello repository is being created the tag is v1.0.1 this is the image id and created 35 second ago now what i need to do i need to push this image on my hub.docker repository for this i will execute a command docker login hit enter sometimes uh, it show you this message login succeed without any prompt of username and password because i just log in my hub.docker a uh, few seconds ago from the same terminal so it have maybe it have saved some session so i'm not getting that particular prompt username and password right in your case you may get the prompt username and password in the username you need to provide the username of your hub.docker.com profile and in the password you need to provide the password so if you will go to the hub.docker.com so you can see after the login i will land on my dashboard so this is my username unsure devops right my username is not my email so if i will go to my profile then you can see your username is being displayed over here right so you need to insert this particular username to log into your hub.docker.com from your terminal now i need to push this particular image how we can push the image right if you remember the command you can insert it directly otherwise to help you i have mentioned that command as well and the command is docker tag your image name then your username your repository and then provide a tag right so we will go back to the terminal and we will enter docker tag my image name my image name is friendly hello colon v.1.1 then my repository name anshul devops suppose i want to name it friendly hello only i don't want to provide any tag right hit enter and then i will execute a command docker push unshold devops then friendly hello hit enter so you can say it is preparing your image and pushing your and pushing your image on the hub.docker.com so we have to wait until the until it will complete and you can see this is complete and this is the digest size is this if i will go to the hub.docker.com and if i will refresh this then you can see a new image is basically pushed a few seconds ago right if you will open this then this is the image and tag should be the latest see the size is 55 mb so this is the way how you can create your own image and how you can push your image right we have already discussed all these stuff in the docker tutorial but i'm just explaining all these things because this is related to the current section now let's move further and we will see how we can deploy an stack by the help of yaml file right so we are going to start with the docker compose yaml then we will move to the docker stack yaml right so first we will discuss the docker compose yaml all although we have already discussed all these things in the docker compose tutorial but few new tags few new uh, operations are basically inserted in this file so that i'm going to discuss it right so let me open this particular file in my visual studio code so this is the docker compose yaml file i will open this right so in the very first line i need to define the version and i'm defining the version 3 then the new tag is services inside the services i need to define my services right so my first service which i'm defining is the web right so this is the service before every 
instruction i have put it the comment over here so that you can relate this right so service name defined as web after this we need to define the image what image we need to download and from where we need to download it right so pull the image from the repository replace the username repo tag with your on name and image details as in my case this is anshul devops hello friendly sorry friendly hello latest in your case you can define your own username and your own image name and image tag right then i am deploying this particular image right the command is or the instruction is deploy right how many replicas i want to deploy i want to deploy five replicas of this particular service so run five instances of this particular image as a service this is something new the resources in the docker compose or in the docker stack as well we can define the resources right how many resource this particular service can use so over here you can see i'm defining the resource i'm limiting the resource right so limit each one of use at most 10% single core cpu and 50 megabyte of ram so what i'm defining i'm defining okay execute this service but every task every container which is running inside this particular service may use most 10% cpu and 50 mb ram by this particular way by defining the resources limits you can define your own service limitation so that you can check the bottleneck you can check the performance on the limited load and on the limited resources so this is very useful feature in the docker stack after this i am defining the restart policy right and inside the restart policy i am defining condition on failure so anytime your container will fail a new container will be spit or in layman terms we can say any time any task of your service fail it will spin up a new container right the ports what i'm exposing is 4000 for the external world and 80 for the containers communication over here i'm defining the overlay network as well and in my case the default overlay network should be webnet right which i'm defining inside the networks as well so you can see this is the network which is defined inside the service see the service tag is over here right this is this is defined inside the service indentation c then we need to define the network separately as well which network we want which network we want to create so networks then webnet so what this will do this will spin up the webnet overlay network and start this particular service in five replicas right on your container so the same instructions are being mentioned over here right so what this will do this will pull out the image from the repository run five instances of that particular image limiting each resource to use at most 10 percent of single core cpu at a time and 50 megabyte of ram immediately restart container if any fails map port 4000 to the host and webs port 80 instruct webs container to share the port 80 by load balancer network called webnet and define the webnet network with the default setting which is a load balancer overlay network now what we need to do we need to start this particular docker yaml file with the help of a docker stack and we can deploy this with this particular command right so docker stack deploy hyphen c docker compose yaml and define your service name so we will go to the terminal clear out the console and first check how many services are running so docker service ls so you can see nothing is running over here in your case if some service is using port 4000 then your service will not start so please make sure none of the service is using the defined port inside the image right and i will execute a command docker stack let's first let's get the help what are the commands available inside the docker stack so you can see deploy ls ps rm and services command are defined over here right so we need to deploy so docker stack deploy hyphen c then i need to define my docker compose ml file name then i need to define my service name in my case i'm going to define it nginx start hit enter then you can see we are getting the messages creating network nginx start webnet and creating service nginx start underscore web now we need to understand this we didn't define the network name we didn't define the service name then how it is creating nginx start webnet and how it is creating nginx start web 
This is because the webnet is the network we have defined inside my Docker Compose YAML, and web is the word which I had defined inside my Docker Compose YAML. See, web is my service name, and webnet is my network name, right? And to start the service, first we should have the network. So first, it is created the nginx start hyphen webnet. nginx start it taken from here, right? This is the stack service prefix I have mentioned over here, right? So if I will execute Docker network ls, then you can see nginx start webnet swarm network is basically running over here. Clear out your console. If I will execute Docker stack ls, then you can see nginx underscore start service is running in the swarm orchestration, right? So we have created the docker stack service, right? Now if you want to verify, then we have already seen this command docker service ls, right? If you want to stack name, you can execute a command docker stack service and your service name. A single container running in this service is called as task, right? So basically inside the service, every replica which is running inside the container is called a task. So we have started the service. Now let's see how many services are running. So we'll execute a command docker service ls. And you can see a single service nginx start web is running. If you want to know that how many tasks is running in this particular service, then you can execute a command docker service ps then your service name, which is which is nginx starter web. So you can see five tasks is running on different different containers on different different machines. So some are running on node two, some are running on node one, and some are running on node three. Now if you will go to the Digital Ocean and copy any IP, whatever you want, right? Paste it here and try to open it on port 4000 because the same port we have mentioned in our Docker Compose YAML file, right? So service should be accessible on this port. We will go to the browser and hit enter button. Then you can see it is returning the hello world host name is this and visit cannot connect to Redis counter disable because till now we don't have implemented the redis in our service if you will copy some another ip suppose i'm going to copy the ip of this machine the first mode right again paste it here and access it on port 4000 i will get the same output so team if you want you can compose your own build and uh, push your build on your docker hub account right if you don't want to do that effort you can mention my repository name and should devops friendly hello in your docker compose file at this particular location over here right in the image and you don't need to do anything else right so this is the first lecture of the docker stack today with the help of the compose yaml file we just started an application which is using some python code in the coming lectures we will extend this and we will see how we can deploy a complete stack with the help of a docker swarm stack so thank you team thanks for your time